Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to week 7 of the UPA. We have our team builder here today. We are taking on a division rival and actually first seed in our division. I was about to say first place, but I prefer the word seed. So, we're taking on Michael and the uh, Kansas City Cherim. And uh, he's got a pretty threatening team and he's also got a very, very good record. I think he's like 5-1 uh, and one right now. He won his last match as well. Uh, so if we can beat him both times that we're playing him this season, this is the first time, uh, then we can actually uh, potentially take the wild card spot uh, and maybe even take his spot as first seed if he starts losing some matches. So uh, I definitely need to try to make a comeback. If we can't do it, then I'm just going to start bringing funky sets and do whatever with my Pokemon. But I absolutely have to win this game or I'm pretty much out of the playoff race at that point. So... You guys will see uh, the team that we're bringing for Michael uh, this week come up on your screen in front of you. We are bringing Electros, the cover coverage, the Electros, excuse me, Jules, the Deancey, the Mega Deancey, Johnson, the Seismitoad, Clara, Arladias, Weasley, the Weavile, and Geo Ente. This team is ordered in, um, in terms of least weird sets to most, as you guys will see. Um, Geo uh, Arente is a pretty fire set. Uh, you'll see my opponent's team come up on your right. He's got a pretty scary team of Gengar, Arcanine, which is just a pain to deal with, uh, Tyrantrum, Alamomola, yet, yet another pain, Granbull, Kadabra, which Michael actually offered to trade to me um, a little bit earlier this week, uh, but I, uh, I, I gladly declined. Uh, he said it was a very good uh, revenge killer, which it is, but I have enough psychic types on my team as it is, so I'll, uh, I'll stick to that. Um, he's got a Mega Heracross, which is a threat. Uh, we've got a Dawn Fan, Reuniclus, Ampharos, regular Ampharos, so it's not that threatening. Um, Ditto and Blissey. Ditto's annoying, Blissey's annoying. They're all annoying. Uh, he's got a lot of annoying Pokemon, a lot of fat walls, such as Arcanine, Elemol, and Blissey. Even Granville can act as a wall, and Dawn Fan as well. Reuniclus is just insanely fat, so. It's a very, very hard team to deal with, but I think we've come up with the right combination of Pokemon to be able to take it on. So the first one we have here is Coverage, our Electros. Rocking Leftovers, which is good for residual recovery, of course. Knockoff to be able to hit the Gengar, get rid of Blissey's item and potentially break uh, Sashes if we need to. Get rid of Alamomola's Leftovers, which would be nice. Maybe a Choice Scarf on Tyrantrum, Rocky Helmet, or Leftovers on Arcanine, you don't know. Uh, could be a Choice Band as well. Knockoff is just a generally good move. Uh, more than likely, not going to lead with this, actually, because... Um, I'm thinking of leading with our Deancey, but uh, I'll get around to that. Uh, anyway, we're rocking max HP to be able to take uh, Gengar's Sludge Wave. We are uh, Assault... Uh, we were Assault Vest. Uh, now we're not. Um, actually, hold on a second. I don't think I had any special attack investment. I think I was max special attack. Uh, Showdown decided to get rid of my EVs, so I had to figure out what the heck I was rocking, but I think this was it. Yeah. I was uh, Assault Vest to be able to take a hit from the Gengar and fire back a knockoff, especially if it's Life Orb. This also takes on Ampharos very well. Uh, I can take on Alamomola and threaten it out. Obviously, I don't appreciate the Toxic. I also switch into Kadabra very easily. Um, Reuniclus as well, able to get a knockoff on the thing and Volt Switch potentially into Weavile, as you guys will see later our set. So this is um, this is our Electros. It's uh, it's basically a special sponge. We need one this week just because of the Gengar and the Reuniclus, uh, and of course the Kadabra, which I feel like he's going to bring against me for some reason. Uh, the fact that he tried to trade it, he's going to try to show me why it's so good i have a feeling but no anyway um so yeah let's move on to our next pokemon right here i'm actually just gonna pause it real quick guys sorry about that I had something stuck in my throat but uh we are back and uh we are back with mega deancey jewels we're rocking a very standard set this week uh which actually does pretty well against this team we have uh, foreign defense 252 special attack with a naive nature because i do not want to be slower than gengar ever I want to at least be able to speed tie it, kind of with uh, like with Latios on um, on Mensa's team. Uh, but this uh, this set is able to outspeed, of course, Mega Heracross. Uh, it outspeeds pretty much my opponent's entire team, barring a Scarfer or the Gengar. So his team is relatively slow, and our coverage actually hits a lot of his team as well. Moonblast able to take out the Tyrantrum from full, as well as the uh, Heracross after Rocks, I believe. Uh, Reuniclus does not appreciate taking a, uh, a naive uh, Moonblast. We are naive, of course, because we want to uh, retain the... 
um, the attack just for Blissey, so that I can hit it with uh, with Diamond Storm, which would be pretty good. Uh, Earth Power is there uh, for Arcanine in case it is a physically defensive variant. A variant, yes, of course, uh, physically defensive variant, and it also hits the Ampharos for super effective damage, so uh, that's pretty good. Uh, and also able to hit an opposing uh, Ditto uh, slash Deancey. Um, with uh, with earth power in case uh, I, I would go for protect to scout what it would do if it doesn't go for the uh, the earth power itself then I will be able to earth power it back and knock it out so that's uh, that's already Yancey said protect is also very good for um, for turn one against the dawn fan I might actually uh, I'm thinking about leading with this thing going for protect on the dawn fan and staying in and moon blasting because I know Michael is a very good player and you would predict me to want to keep my Deancey and go for rocks potentially. And I do not want rocks to go up this game. So I'm just going to Moonblast the Dawn Fan. Even if he stays in, I can threaten it out with pretty much anything else on my team. Uh, including our next Pokemon, Seismitoad. Which is our Stealth Rocker. Now this, this set is very interesting as you guys will see. I'm rocking Refresh. Uh, max HP, max defense because this thing can take hits from Tyrantrum all day long. It takes a, um, a Scarfed Outrage. Uh, no problem, and I'm able to hit him back with a uh, with a Scald, which actually does a lot. Or a Toxic, if I, w I just want to get him uh, poisoned. Stealth Rocks here, because Rocks are going to be crucial to this game, and you guys will see when we get to our last Pokemon. A couple of Calcs that I ran, so... Uh, and Refresh is there so that I can take on the Alamomola. I can Toxic it, and if it decides to Toxic me, then I can Refresh it off, and I can just gain Leftovers instead, and just be neutral, basically. So uh, I would get the Alamomola poisoned. He would have to bring in Blissey on me, in which case I could also Toxic that. And uh, we would just start playing around between the Blissey and the Alamomola. Uh, the Alamomola is coming, uh, coming for sure. I'm 100% sure of it. Uh, it walls Weavile completely with no item. Uh, it walls, uh, normally walls Entei. Um, <laughs> you guys, I'm so, I'm so hyped about this set. This is going to be like the first super wacky thing that we do. Uh, other than maybe our Deancey set a couple of weeks back, but... Um, Alamomola walls a lot of my team, so I think he has to bring it. Uh, Blissey as well is pretty good, uh, just because uh, Alamomola doesn't like taking special hits too much unless it's Assault Vested, so Blissey can soak that up. Uh, anyway, so this is our Seismic Toad. It's also a very good uh, water move check. Uh, I can switch into Alamomola, like I said before, at any time and gain back my health, so he has to be careful with that. Uh, other potential abilities that I could have run were Swift Swim and Poison Touch, none of which really do anything for me, so I'm just going to stick with Water Absorb this week. Uh, next up on the block is Latias, and this is uh, this is where things start getting a little bit wild, guys. <laughs> As you can see, we're rocking Dragon Pulse, Psy Shock, Recover, and Psych Up. Now, you might be asking yourself, what is this spread, and what does it do? This is if I'm faced with a Reuniclus that is setting up all over me, like let's say on my Seismic Toad. And it just wants to go up to plus six, plus six, because I can't touch it, and I'm not switching out. I'm just firing off Scalds. I can come in with Latias after. Even if he's Shadow Ball, I psych up his Calm Mind boosts. I take, like, 35% from his Shadow Ball, and I'm able to two-hit KO him with Psy Shock if he went to plus six. Yeah, that's what this thing does. As you can see, we're rocking 72 special attack. That's to be able to 2 hit KO him. Uh, the 148 in defense is because I want to be able to take his, his Psy Shock when he realizes that Shadow Ball is doing nothing to me and I'm sh Psy Shocking him. Because there is no way he is not clicking Shadow Ball in the first turn. There is just no way he's not clicking Shadow Ball. He's not going to predict me and go for Psy Shock. There's no chance. And we're rocking 40 speed. The 266 is to be able to outspeed. Uh, what was it again that hits 265? Tyrantrum. Uh, a non scarf variant of Tyrantrum cannot outspeed me, uh, and I didn't need that much speed. I have enough to, uh, to take on the majority of his team. If he's rocking Adam and Heracross, I'll be able to outspeed that as well. Uh, I'm actually thinking about running a little bit more speed, uh, maybe toning down on the HP because we are leftovers, um, and maybe bringing it up to uh, 273, but it's a little bit difficult. I do have to invest like another 40 uh, points in there, so it's not optimal. Uh, but this Latias is just going to be here to, to give off big hits. Um, Blissey doesn't appreciate coming in on a Psy Shock ever in its life, and uh, Alamola, same thing, doesn't appreciate coming in on a Dragon Pulse. This thing takes on um, Arcanine pretty well, uh, being able to, uh, to Dragon Pulse that as well, because its special defense isn't usually what's invested into. This thing takes on Dawn Fan if it's not Rocking Knockoff. Uh, can take on the Ampharos, uh, minus Toxic. But its main goal is going to be 
to psych up a boost from the Reuniclus or anything else that he decides to set up with barring Tyrantrum because that thing would obviously take us out right away. Uh, I could also bank on a Confusion and maybe take his plus six plus six. Uh, or his plus two plus two rather from the dragon dances if he gets up to that and then I would be able to knock him out with the dragon pulse after um, Wish I was running outrage, but no uh, not gonna do that. So this is our Latias set. Our next set is uh, Weasley the Weavile Now look at this. <laughs> we are leftovers knock off poison jab swords dance substitute Let me explain what this set does guys this set with the 40 HP investment allows us to eat up a Scald from an Alamomola. Uninvested, of course. But behind a sub, it does not break the sub. I am able to get off a Swords Dance afterwards, and he cannot touch me. And Knock Off pretty much hits the majority of my opponent's team, minus maybe Heracross. But if I'm behind a sub, Heracross can't hit me outside of Rock Blast anywhere, or Pin Missile, rather. Uh, but if Heracross is eliminated earlier in the game, that would be amazing. I can set up with Weavile and basically nuke my opponent's entire team from that point on. Uh, the leftovers are there so that uh, I can get back up subs at any point. If the Alamomola is trying to, to just break my subs with uh, Scald, I'll be able to get, get up to plus six. Poison Jab is there, of course, for the Grand Bull because I cannot touch it. Otherwise, Ice Shard does absolutely nothing. Um, behind uh, behind a sub, he actually doesn't intimidate us, which is nice, but Ice Shard at like plus six doesn't even knock out a Grand Bull, which is ridiculous. So uh, I'm not going I'm not opting for Ice Shard. I think Poison Jab is just overall better. I'll be also be able to hit the things that I don't hit super effectively with Knock Off, I guess. Uh, for example, I don't know the um, the Arcanine. Uh, no, knockoff's still better there. I, I Anyway, uh, Poison Jab is there for the Grand Bull. I don't know if this is going to work or not, but hopefully it does. And uh, Swords Dance is always nice, so. Um, I'm really liking Swords Dance Weavile in League Play. I think it's uh, I think it's the optimal set to bring in, in most matches, uh, because people will often switch out on Weavile into their counters, and if you have, let's say, a berry, uh, like a Watmel berry for a uh, Ferrothorn, you are now at plus two, you're able to knock out the Ferrothorn, and you're able to knock out everything afterwards as well, so Swords Dance is starting to feel like the best possible Weavile set in general to me. And here goes, guys. I'm about to show you our win con. This is coming back to Alamomola. My opponents only switch to a Sacred Fire from Entei, because Entei can also go for Stone Edge if it's banned, so he can't go in, into Arcanine. His only switch into a Sacred Fire is the Alamomola. Let me show you how we're gonna deal with this. We are Special Entei with Substitute, Calm Mind, Flamethrower, Hidden Power Ground. I will come in on a Mega Evolved Heracross. I'm faster. As you can see, we're 274 speed. I will go for a Calm Mind. Bluffing the Sacred Fire, I will go for a Calm Mind. And when his Alamomola comes in, I am going to substitute. As you can see, we have 431 HP. That means that Blissey can't break our sub. If he decides to run a special Blissey without Seismic Toss, then Surf ain't gonna break our sub either once we get up to plus two. Calm Mind plus Flamethrower plus Hidden Power Ground. Flamethrower, let me show you what it hits. Gengar. Alamomola, actually. You'd be surprised, but at plus six plus six, it does a lot. <laughs> uh, it hits the Alakazam, and Alakazam can only break our sub with a, uh, if we get up that high, of course, it can only break our sub with a Psyshock. It nukes Heracross, nukes Donphan, unboosted Reuniclus, Ampharos, Blissey, that's right, you heard me, Blissey, the special wall, is two hit KO'd from plus six plus six. And yes, I can just sit and call mind on it because it takes, it's only taking off 12% at a time uh, from me every time that I go for call mind. So essentially just giving me a, uh, a burn turn uh, from him trying to hit me with seismic DOS. Eventually I will end up behind a sub against it at plus six plus six. If his Mega Heracross is Mega Evolved, it is the only thing that threatens me behind a sub because of the fact that it can break the sub and keep hitting me because of skill link. I outspeed that thing, and I knock it out with a flamethrower. Alamomola cannot break our sub at plus six plus six. There's just no way, that, unless he crits the Scald, in which case I'll just go for sub again. But 
In Power Ground hits Arcanine, Tyrantrum, and Ditto that becomes Zente. And his IVs will not permit him to have Hidden Power Ground on his Ditto. At least he shouldn't. Uh, he should bring a different Hidden Power like, I guess, uh, Ice or... Um, I don't know. It's basically something to come in on Latias, I guess, and be able to hit something else on my team. Maybe Hidden Power Flying for Chestnut. Who knows? But... Um, he probably will not have Hidden Power Ground. I very much doubt so. So he will not be able to hit us. And, um... Yeah. So... That's pretty much it. Uh, Hidden Power Ground hits everything that Flamethrower doesn't, and I'm expecting to sweep with Entei. And if you don't believe me, then just watch the battle. It hasn't happened yet or anything, but just watch the battle tomorrow, guys. Uh, if it doesn't go through, it doesn't go through, and we're pretty much out of the playoff race, and I'm just gonna play from, for fun from now on. But if this does work, I leave myself open to a lot of different possibilities for our next game between us and the uh, the Kansas City Cherim. I can actually bring a real team next time. And he might think twice about bringing Alamomola against me because it's setup fodder for two of my Pokemon. So that's pretty much it, guys. If you enjoyed this team builder, if you're curious to see how this battle is going to go down with special Entei, um, hit that like button down below for me. Subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, if you uh, want to see Showdown Lives uh, four to five times a week, if you want to see these league matches on the weekend, uh, then definitely be sure to subscribe and uh, leave a comment for me. Let me know what you want to see as a set potentially on any given week. Uh, if you want to see a, a Pokemon brought more often, if you enjoyed this, just leave me a comment in general. You can also do that on Twitter or on Facebook, both of which are in the description down below. And uh, yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. Cheer on your Montreal Habsaws. Be there tomorrow for the match, guys, and I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye.